Okay, awesome. We will get started. Um, so hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us for um, our optimization of your site search experience webinar. So excited to have you. Um, so my name is Jesse. I'm on our product marketing team. And today I'm joined by Ryan and Jason um, from our consulting team. They are um, some very talented technical engagement managers. And a lot of you on this call um, might even be lucky enough to work with them on a daily basis. So happy to have them to share some tips and tricks. Um, so our agenda for today. First, um, I'll quickly run through the importance of optimizing your search experience. Uh, then Ryan and Jason will spend the majority of our time today uh, walking you through some tactics that they have seen either some of our clients use or they've used themselves um, to drive higher engagement and search. And then finally, we'll wrap up um, by answering some of your questions live. Um, and so if at any point you have a question, feel free to type it in our uh, Q&A module um, at the bottom of your uh, Zoom window. Um, and then also, if you think of any questions after the webinar, you can always post those in our community. Um, so happy to talk today, happy to talk another day. Um, and one quick note that I will make is that this webinar is mainly intended uh, for, you know, those hitchhikers of you out there who already have your answers experience live and are, you know, looking for those next steps, ready to optimize. If you're still looking for an intro of answers or maybe some like high level high level overview, um, definitely feel free to check out um, our Yext YouTube channel for some of our previous webinars or the Hitchhiker community um, is always an awesome place to get um, some really in-depth training. But feel free to stay um, and, and learn what you can about the more advanced side of answers because uh, that's our topic for today. Great. So why exactly is it so important to optimize your search experience on an ongoing basis? So to answer that question, let's back up a second. We all know that Google, Alexa, and Siri have retrained us to ask simply for what we want when we're looking for an answer online. And these services have set the standard for the consumer experience all across the web. We don't want to browse through and click through a bunch of pages on a website anymore um, to, to get the answers to our most important questions. And now you can ask Google a simple question like, what are the best golf shoes near me? And not only does it understand every part of your question, it responds with an answer right there in the results, uh, demonstrating that it understands all the parts of your question. And you don't have to go through, click through links and navigate to a page of a website. So that's exactly why at Yext, we have created answers because we believe that every site should have a search experience um, that has that same technology pioneered by these modern search engines. Um, so users should be able to have that same fantastic experience on your website and get a direct answer. But what happens if your website can't answer their question? Let's say it's me. If it takes me more than a few clicks, I'm probably gonna give up. Uh, I might, you know, just go, what would I do? I would probably give up and go to Google um, or another search engine, basically right where I started from. Um, and so when someone bounces back to that search engine, they could find incorrect information about your business or honestly worse, find information from one of your competitors. Um, and that's precisely what is at risk if your search can't handle the questions that your customers are asking. And that is why it's so important to optimize your experience along the way. And so no search engine is gonna be perfect from the start. And that's why you can't set it and forget it when it comes to building a search engine. In fact, it's a lifelong cycle of optimization so that with each modification, you're making it easier for your end users to find answers. And in turn, you're creating more value for your company. Um, and so you can see here, this is kind of a representation, <coughs> excuse me, of our um, user's journey. Basically, the, the, what's going on here is that when we get data from users interacting with your search experience, they ask a question, we get to see all of the touch points in their search journey, we're capturing analytics at every step of the way, which really gives us a sense of their true intent behind their question and how well 
um, your search engine was able to, to answer their question and, and what steps they were able to take from uh, that search. Um, and from there, you really can see where you need to um, make some modifications to your knowledge graph or your answers configuration to better serve users in the future. Um, and so the more people are using that search engine, the more Intel you have and the more you can perfect it. Um, so it's really this virtuous cycle um, where you, you keep feeding back into it, the better and better uh, your search experience is gonna be. So for example, let, let's just take this um, you know, demo of a tele, telecommunication company here. What if you notice on this corporate website that in your analytics report, the users are searching for career opportunities, but you don't have any information on your website at all about jobs. Um, and, you know, because when you first got started, let's say building this answers experience, you were loading in your FAQs into your knowledge graph. Um, and you honestly didn't even consider catering content to that potential job applicant audience. So now that you know that there's an interest in this, you know, you, you look at your analytics and you see, oh my goodness, there's so many searches, but no clicks, it's a, it's a terrible click through rate. Right? Like I need to better serve this, this user. Um, that's a missed opportunity. Um, now that you know that there's interest in the topic, you can add hiring specific FAQs. Um, and you might even partner with your HR department to add those open job positions um, as entities in your knowledge graph. And you could create a whole vertical around jobs um, in your search experience on that corporate website where you really didn't think people were coming to learn about your jobs, but it turns out they are. Um, so it's important to take a hands-on approach just so that you don't miss any opportunity to serve that user. You can keep your bounce rates low and you maximize value. And just where does that value come from? So a reminder, if you use answers, you've definitely heard this before, um, but they're so important. The three pillars of value you can get first is the gaining of customer intelligence. Um, like I said, you're gaining insights at every step of the way from even just knowing what the uh, search terms are that are most popular to um, how users as a, as a pattern maybe are interacting with your experience. Does everybody click that same button? Does everybody get lost at that one step in the user journey? Um, or, you know, is it, is it a perfect experience? Could it stand to have some um, tweaks to make it better? Um, you're reducing your support costs because customers can find answers to questions that Maybe previously they would have to pick up the phone and talk to one of your support agents, or they needed to use your live chat function, um, when really it's a pretty generic question you get all the time. And if you can uh, serve it to people in an easy way for them to digest, they're going to prefer that too. Um, and you'll spend less money supporting that user. Um, and then lastly, you're increasing conversions by offering direct calls to action um, through buttons like, uh, you know, uh, RSVP, get directions, make an appointment, um, request a demo. So those, by putting all of these options right in front of someone, you are, you know, fixing any gaps in your experience. And to just to bring this full circle, you're also making sure that you're extracting that value yourself. Because number one, your customers are enjoying a more pleasant and useful search experience. And they'll be motivated to return the next time that they have a question. And number two, when you have more users using that experience, you're opening up additional opportunities to draw value through newfound customer intelligence, reduce support costs, additional conversions. So long story short, meeting your customer's needs in search makes them happy, and then you reap the benefits of that happiness. Um, and so now it's time for your tips and tricks with Ryan and Jason. Um, and one point I just wanted to make here is if you're super hands-on um, and you're an administrator of your own experience, um, you will be able to follow right along and um, take these tricks on um, after the webinar, but also it will be helpful for you. Let's say you use managed services hours. Um, it, it's insightful just to be able to see what levers are available um, to your technical engagement manager who might be managing this part of your um, search for you. So either way, um, we feel that both audiences will enjoy these tips and tricks. So I'll pass it over to our lovely Thames. Thank you, Jesse. All right, so as Jesse mentioned, um, today we're gonna walk through um, nine different tips um, that we think you, you know, can and definitely should um, employ in your answers experiences to you know, optimize them um, accordingly. 
accordingly. Um, the majority of these things, you know, you can definitely, you know, applies to every single engine experience. Um, and some of them, you know, we're going to go through specific use cases. Um, we'll walk through a couple, you know, client examples um, in each case where you can see all of these things actually uh, are live today. Um, cool. So with that, um, I'll pass it on to Ryan for the first tip here. Great. Thanks, Jason. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining. So when we're talking about optimizing our search experience, let's start right at the top with it, with the search bar itself. Um, we know that customers who use search over browsing in your header navigation or browsing through your pages, um, those that use search have a better experience, better rates of successfully finding information, doing it more quickly, and report a higher average um, of customer satisfaction overall with your site. So with that in mind, Yex wanted to get a better idea of what we can do from a design perspective uh, to lead to the highest increase in search bar usage, which then will lead to the increase in your um, customer's experience. So what our study found is right here, a great example from the state of New Jersey um, of a really prominent search bar, a nice full width search bar um, right on, their, on the home screen of their COVID-19 hub, um, which users can use to uh, find right on the page. Some clients will use the search bar icon, which is great too, um, but we feel this is a much better way to kind of showcase that your site has answers that your site um, is available for your clients and your customers to be, to be asking you questions uh, and making it nice and prominent on the page. Another thing you can do is remove clutter around the search bar itself, or if the search bar is in your header navigation by having it stand out on its own. And as you can see here, a nice, uh, a nice contrast so that the search bar stands out on its own. It's the white search bar and kind of a gray background. Uh, and you'll see that the within the search bar itself, or, or you can see an example of what even you can search for. Um, some clients, I'll say, also use a Yext built answers overlay, which kind of looks like a, a chat box on the bottom right of the page, which is also great. Really, anything that you can do to make your search bar or your search experience more apparent to the customer will lead to a higher rate of them using it. And of course, a higher user satisfaction, which at the end of the day is, is all, everyone's goal here. Um, if it's a Yext built page, we can mock up and implement these designs for your company's homepage or for wherever the, the search experience may live. Um, and if it's a Yext built page, then we can mock it up and implement it all on our own with managed services. So our next tip then is an animated search bar. So we saw on the last screen a nice prominent search bar, and here's another uh, good example of it. You'll see in the GIF here of Fizzoli's um, search, search function is that Every time, every few seconds, a new um, search suggestion will scroll across, across the screen, um, doing several things for, for the customer. First of all, of course, it draws attention and makes the experience look more professional, making more folks want to use the search, uh, the search function. But even more importantly, perhaps, is that it helps train customers on what they may ask of you. Um, like we said earlier, folks no longer really want to use and shouldn't be using just keyword search um, like we did a decade ago. Now Google and of course Yext search um, is able to process natural language and having this scrolling text here with examples of what um, customers can and should be searching on your page um, helps reassure them and train them that they can be asking really anything they want of you uh, and be confident that they'll find a, a good answer in your search experience. So how we would do this um, is actually through a third party library. So on your company's page, you can implement this with a third party library um, via a, a JavaScript site that we have an example of on our Hitchhiker platform. So if you go to our Hitchhiker platform, you can see um, a link to the JS library that we would recommend and also a code demo um, that explains this proce uh, process of implementing it on your page, which really is not a ton of effort, but really is a big boon for the, for the overall search experience and look of your, of your homepage and search experience. Jason, back to you. Thanks, Ryan. All right, uh, moving on to the third tip um, is employing query suggestions. Um, so what these are, are hard-coded uh, prompts um, on you know, the search bar itself, as you can see in the screenshot above, um, as well as while users are actually typing. Um, you can actually, the, the purpose of it is just to teach you know, customers how you know, our answer search really works. Um, what customers are used to is obviously you know, keyword-based search. Um, that it just isn't very good. And you know, what we're trying to get customers to, to learn is that they can search for very complex queries um, and they will get the answers that they're desiring. 
you can also make sure that you're, you know, focusing uh, questions on specific things that you want users to learn about your company, um, whether that be like key goals or key products that you want to surface, um, or, you know, just paying attention to specific verticals like FAQs, help articles, um, make sure that they just know that you have all that information available to them. Um, the actual effort of, you know, implementing these query suggestions is quite simple. Um, and I'm actually going to show you all how to do that uh, really quick in a demo. So this is just an example of that uh, telecommunications provider that, uh, you know, was, was shown earlier. Uh, you can see here that there, when you click into the search bar, there's this full list of hard-coded prompts that, you know, are trying to get a user to learn that, you know, they can search a pretty complex question um, and get a and get a great answer with it. Um, so what I just want to show you is, you know, within the answers platform, um, how to do this yourself. So if you go into the actual back end of answers, uh, right now we're on the configuration for this um, specific search bar. If you just go down to the query suggestions tab on the left, um, you go to these universal prompts. So that's what shows up when, once you click into the search bar. You can see all these things that are listed here is what shows up when I first clicked into that search bar. So that's why I can feel free to come down here, um, add any prompts, change them around. And then another cool thing we can do uh, with these vertical prompts is we can actually input uh, like related to specific uh, entity types, um, prompts that we want to surface. In this case, you can see we're actually just leveraging the name of every single help article. Um, so what we can do is we can add for the quite like FAQs, for example, um, all we need is just to call the API name that, that we're referencing from the knowledge graph. Um, in this case, something like the question. Um, and then every time a user is gonna start typing a specific question, like how to add a data bundle, um, all of those queries you know, will start to come up because um, it's referencing every single question um, for every single FAQ that you have in the knowledge graph. So that's just a good way that you can you know, try to teach uh, your customers what they can search for. Awesome. Uh, now I'll pass it back to Ryan. So the next tip here is about varied entity types and CTAs. So um, of course, we've got a whole bunch of different verticals, a whole bunch of um, different pieces of information that a client can be asking of us, can be querying in our search bar. Um, and, and the best way really to do that for a visual experience is to vary uh, the formats of the cards vary what different CTAs come up so that we can best uh, push them in the right direction for conversion, but also, as we keep saying, for a better visual experience. So in this example here um, of, a, of a phone company, we have services plans, FAQs, products, solutions, and each of those is best, uh, best shown on page a little differently. For example, here we have phones that are in sort of a list format with different CTAs to look at more phones, to purchase the phones. But if we wanted to, uh, as many of our clients do as well, we could put these in sort of a grid fashion. So we could have um, larger, more prominent pictures of our products, in this case, phones side by side with um, prices below them, clicks to convert, to, to, to add them to the cart or to purchase them directly, um, clicks for more information. We can really do whatever we need to here to best showcase the type of information um, within each vertical. You know, one of the beautiful things about answers is that this is all very customizable. We can make the cards look however we want to. We can surface any photos here, um, any text, of course, point clients in whatever direction with different CTAs. Um, and of course, our managed services team, which is the team that I'm on in consulting, for those of you clients, uh, for those of our clients that have managed services hours, our team can mock up some different designs for these cards, mock up different ways we may want to showcase this information. Um, and of course, of course, those of you who are um, hitchhiker admins on your own can feel free to do this uh, right in the platform to, to um, showcase the different products that you have, different articles uh, in any format you, you so choose. We can house photos, we can house videos, like I said, show them on, on different grid types, change the image sizes, um, return any different pieces of information from our knowledge graph. All of these kind of go together to build out the most um, professional looking and, and robust answers experience so that once a customer is searching on your page, um, they'll get all the different verticals, all the different entities that may be relevant to them uh, in the most sort of optimized visual experience. So, and then our next one is promotional banners. So this is a really, this is one of my favorite tools actually um, for any of 
of any of my clients that I work with. Here's an example of, of Cox. You can see here that for Cox Communication, there is a promotion banner here simply about coronavirus information. Now, what a, what a promotion banner is, is simply a special entity type to highlight new products, events, um, seasonal content, new promotions you have, um, really anything that you want to do to highlight for the customer on every search or on some searches, whatever you'd like. Um, so this is, this is a kind of way to um, implement direct answers aside from our algorithm. Our algorithm where applicable, of course, will provide direct answers through um, document search and of course, um, phone numbers or FAQs or whatever you're asking for. But these promotional banners are specific entities that we can be changing uh, on a real-time basis right in the knowledge graph to lead customers directly down a specific conversion funnel that we um, that we know is highly likely to get them to purchase your products or create an account with you or, or whatever the conversion desired conversion may be. Um, like on the previous slide for the varied cards and CTAs, we see that this coronavirus information piece sort of sticks out from the rest of the experience. Um, we do this on purpose so that it looks like it looks like its own, you know, kind of highlighted piece of information. Even sometimes you can make it look like an ad right on your page for your own products, of course. Uh, and what's great is that we can set these set these entities up before time, schedule them to go live before um, before an event or before a new product of yours kicks off. So, for example, if on the first of the month, um, on the first of the month, a new phone comes out, and you're selling a new phone, or on the first of the month, uh, you have a grand opening event that you want to highlight. We can ahead of time put that in the X platform and have it set up to go live on your pages and be a promotion banner whenever you need it to be. Um, and that's really great about the the customization of answers and something that I think, um, from my experience, my clients get a ton of uh, a ton of usage out of that customization to be able to um, you know highlight some of the the biggest uh, ad campaigns that's going on in the for for their business or. Um, anything like that. So I think it's really powerful. I would recommend that anyone who's a hitchhiker um, look into implementing these. Anyone who has managed services hours, by all means, I would I would ask your technical engagement managers to um, to look into this with you, and of course, design these up with our team. Next is adding query context. So this is a really neat tool um, that I like as well. This is kind of a way to segment. Um, entities that we would return based on things that we know about your clients. Um, so when your client logs into your website, you know maybe something they've given you like their age, like their gender, like their past purchasing history and things like that. We're not talking about personal uh, identifiable information, but rather general clues about them that may guide us in the direction of what sort of products they may wanna purchase from you or um, what kind of answers they may be looking for. So for example, um, let's say we know a user's age group. We don't want to know their specific age, but we wanna know what age group they're from. Um, maybe we'd pass through that um, certain age groups prefer iPhones, certain prefer Androids or something like that. Maybe they've purchased, purchased Androids in the past. So maybe we'd want to kind of put our foot in the pedal and give them more uh, Android first results instead of iPhones. So in this case, perhaps their, their context is that they've purchased a Samsung Galaxy before. Um, and you know this because they've logged into their account on your website. Anytime they search on the future, you probably have a higher likelihood of converting with them if you show them more galaxies because that's their purchasing history. So um, a great thing in the platform is that we have the power to um, bring in this information from your website via context setting and then create query rules to return specific entities in this case or specific um, you know, ordering of entities. Another great use case I've seen for this as well is for when websites have um, sort of premium content. Maybe you're uh, a website that focuses on different blogs and articles. And if you log into your, into your website, um, premium or paid users or subscribers can see extra information. We can use this query context setting to um, parse out which of your clients are, are signed in so that we can be showing them the extra information and then keeping it entirely off of the answers experience of somebody who maybe isn't logged in. Um, so again, this is a great way to kind of control the conversion funnel and add to more um, customization of your user's experience when, when they're on your website. Um, so they're more comfortable using your answers experience and of course doing business with you. 
Thank you, Jason. Awesome. All right, uh, moving on to the next point to talk about case deflection. Um, so I think this is um, one of the points that um, is pretty niche in its use case. Um, and we see a lot of value come from this, um, but essentially, you know, the, the goal is to really decrease those support costs um, on, you know, forms that you might have, you know, customers are, are able to submit directly on your website. So in this case, you can see on the right, uh, is a client that I actually implemented, uh, Outreach Corporation, um, and on within their actual support portal, um, in filling out the support form, when you click on a different product area, um, it automatically opens the X search bar on the right to try to deflect you from submitting a form, um, you know, to to their support team. Um, so in this case, um, we've seen you know some some great um, opportunities. Um, as well as, you know, as I said, the support costs are really, you know, driving down. Um, the actual implementation effort is also pretty light here. Um, as Ryan mentioned, in our HI use community, you can find, you know, various code snippets to just install um, on your website to, um, you know, to, to, to do this specific uh, deflection. Um, moving on to experience training. Um, what this does is what we, we just want to train, you know, the, the answer is algorithm. Um, obviously, the algorithm is not the same um, for every client uh, and every use case, um, even within the same you know, industry or sector to completely different brands. Um, I want to teach the algorithm different things. Um, and I'm going to walk through a couple examples here of what I mean. But essentially, what we can do is we can train um, you know, the, the algorithm in, in three different ways. Um, one is through featured snippets. Um, so those are specific um, you know, text blocks that come up. Um, once a certain query is uh, inputted. The second is through NLP filters or natural language processing filters. Um, so if you search for a specific brand, a specific category, even a specific entity type, um, and you're thinking, um, you, and you actually don't want um, that specific entity type to surface, for example, you can teach the, alg you can teach the algorithm not to show that and to show something else. Um, and lastly, spell checking, which I'm sure everyone is familiar with, we can actually train the algorithm to not bring up certain spell checks, um, to automatically bring up new ones, um, you know, through, throughout the cycle of uh, search. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you guys now. It's just a few examples of how to do that. Um, so back in our telecommunications example, um, you can see here, I just asked, how do I back up my phone? Um, what came up is a featured snippet. Um, you can see we're actually just highlighting an answer directly from a help article. Um, below. Um, in this case, it looks like the answer is great. Um, I might actually just want to edit um, instead of the highlighted piece to say, use the wizard that automatically launches uh, when you open the application. I actually wanted to show start from the first sentence just so it's very clear um, to the customer that this is for automatic backups. Um, so to do this, we just go back into our answers backend. We see this tab on the left devoted to training and it has all these things that I mentioned. Specifically for the featured snippets, you can see um, all of the snippets that have come up uh, through all the searches that have been run um, for, for your users. Um, what's unique here is um, the search term and the answer, um, the unique combination of those is, is what's gonna show up. Um, if that specific term and answer came up multiple times, that's where you'll see that searches um, number increase. So that's where you might want to pay your most attention to those, um, you know, high volume searches. Um, in this case, you can see what I just mentioned. Um, you can see that the answer that came up. I'm actually just going to change this answer, as I mentioned. Um, I actually want to include the beginning of the sentence. So I'm going to do is click on the little um, wand icon. Um, and then if I just highlight the whole sentence instead, it just updates that answer. It says what the answer will be changed to. Um, and if I go ahead and apply that change going forward, um, it's going to use that uh, featured snippet. One thing that's pretty cool about featured snippets specifically as well, is that we can actually just tell the algorithm to only show featured snippets that you approve. So you can see this prediction mode down here. Right now it's set to allow everything you know that the algorithm might think is correct. Uh, we can actually just change that to approve only. So this, so those verified uh, featured snippets that you have already gone through um, are the only ones that would show up um, in your answers experience. 
touching quickly here on these other things that you can train the algorithm to do. As far as the NLP filters goes, uh, those natural language processing uh, filters, you can see a term like Apple products um, brought up a couple of different things for products, a brand of Apple, the entity type, we're obviously talking about products. Um, for help articles, it also you know, wanted to talk about um, Apple products. So it looks like this is pretty good. This is good for my search. I'll probably just train the algorithm to say, yeah, that was great. Keep doing this in the future. Um, if there's a case where um, Apple products come up and you actually just don't want to show those help articles, uh, maybe you would you would reject that. You would reject that um, you know filter that came in. Spell checking as well. Um, I'll show you a quick example of that. If I type like transfer service and I misspell transfer, uh, you can see it, it's it, it's asking me if I meant transfer service. Um, in all cases, um, in most of these cases, I think the algorithm does a pretty good job, um, and you just want to make sure you know tell it that it's doing a good job there. Um, in this case, I will approve that. Um, in other cases, you just might not want that spell check to go through. Um, it just might not make sense if it's like two words that are close together, um, you know, in in structure, um, and it's bringing up one that you definitely didn't mean. That's where you might reject that um, training, and the algorithm will will learn from there. Cool. All right, and the last point that we just wanted to touch on was adding synonyms. Um, what this does is it lets you know some of your branded or, or common terminolo terminology surface, um, even if the user really isn't asking for it. Um, so, so this is like specifically related to your brand. If you use a lot of you know keywords or terminology that you know a regular customer might not know of, um, even if you're not asking that directly, you can still have you know your specific products, your specific entity type surface. I will say this is probably the easiest thing to add over all the things that I've demoed today. Um, directly, you know, as, I've, as, as we've been working in the back end of answers, um, really just telling the algorithm, what should we consider to be the same? Um, what should we consider to be just one-way synonyms, um, which is, you know, a direct line. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll show a couple of examples here. Okay, so we're back in our back end. Um, just wanna run a quick search for devices. Um, you can see right now what, what's coming up is, you know, FAQs. You can see um, there's device in this question. That's just, you know, based off some keyword search. Um, but I was actually thinking that um, if I want devices, if someone searched for devices, I actually want to show products. I'm thinking that like devices and, and phones are, are more or less the same thing to, to me and my company. Um, so within the back end of answers, as we've been before, you should go to the tab on the left, synonyms. And within that, you can see a couple synonym sets that have already you know, been set up here. Um, things like making sure that a store and a location are denoted as, as the same thing. Um, so something I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna say that devices and phones um, should be treated um, synonymously. Just go ahead and save that. And when I go back to the search, and if I run the same query, you can see that now products are coming up first um, because it's you know it's treating devices as phones. Um, it's the same thing as if I were to type phones. Um, the same the same result is going to show up. So that's really the value there is you can make sure that you know specific specific words um, are are treated the same. Uh, specifically talking about one-way synonyms, um, and I'm just going to go through the example that's you know directly in our platform here. Uh, but it's really the use case of if you're searching for a niche term um, within like a, a larger subset um, or, or, or a larger group of, of items. So in this case, you know a, a tablet. If you search for a tablet, you're going to want an iPad to come up. However, if you search for iPad, you might not want other Android tablets to come up. Um, so that's the use case where um, you, you might want to use one-way synonyms. I think um, the majority of times synonym sets are used just so we can group um, all the things together um, that you know we might want to service the same results. Um, and again, for those more niche terms that you might be considering, you're going to want to use those one-way synonyms. Cool. Um, and that is the last... Um, you know, tip that we wanted to go over.
Um, so I'll pass it back uh, to Jesse to finish us off here. Awesome. So now that we have all of these tools in our back pocket, uh, what what's next? I'm hitting next for me. So first of all, we would love to encourage any of you who aren't already uh, members of Hitchhikers to join. Um, it's a great way to reinforce uh, the tips and tricks we just went over. Um, you can find detailed how-tos on each of these. Um, and should you have any questions, um, you can definitely post in the community. Um, and it you know, gives you an opportunity to practice what you've learned through quizzes, um, as well as, like I said, read an in-depth uh, explanation of different features and why they're beneficial and how you can access them. Um, and uh, yes, you get to earn badges um, and you can test your knowledge. So um, one thing we really like about it is if you are competitive at all, um, you can you know, earn points, you can compare your rank on hitchhikers.com against your teammates or friends um, and really track your progress. Um, and it's a great way to sort of demonstrate to others that you've put a lot of time into learning um, the Yext platform and that you're a power user. Um, so just to recap that, uh, our, the URL is uh, hitchhikers.yext.com um, and you can make an account if you don't have one or log into your existing account. Um, you earn your badges and your rank there, and you can engage as much as you would like um, by you know, chatting with other members of our community, um, attending events like this. Um, and yeah, we really hope you, we, to find you thereafter. Um, so now just we'd love to open it up for any additional questions that you may not have um, already asked um, about today's session now that we have our technical engagement managers with us. And like I said, that's the um, Q&A module at the bottom of your screen. So I'll give uh, just a few minutes to see if anyone has any lingering questions before we sign off. Okay, so the first question um, we have is, how do we know if the hard-coded prompts that we've set are working um, or like if they're effective? Um, basically, so that you would know if you should change them or if you've chosen the right ones. Jesse, I can take that one. Um, this is a question that we, we deal with a lot on the managed services team um, because our role is to constantly be iterating with clients and, and optimizing their answers experience. So we spend a lot of time looking at analytics and um, tracking how different queries are, are performing. So um, for hard-coded prompts, we would see them in the analytics uh, tab within the X platform. And once we've set a query as a hard-coded prompt, what we'd be looking for is that that query will be getting higher searches. Um, and if it's getting a good click-through rate, um, it's getting good engagement, that means that our customers are finding the answers they need. So it's a clue that we're going, that we have the right thing there. Um, like we mentioned earlier, we'd recommend refreshing hard-coded prompts from time to time and keeping them especially up to date with new promotions, events, or products that your, your business has. Um, as oftentimes clients will be coming to your page looking for answers on, on, on those. So um, yeah, we spend a lot of time in the analytics and that gives us a lot of clues about the success of our queries, our hardcore prompts and actually what our customers are asking for. Awesome. Um, so the next question that we have is, um, you know, based on that jobs um, example we had earlier, how do you know when you are missing something from your knowledge graph? Like what's the best place to look um, to understand when you might have gaps in the data that you've stored in knowledge graph? I can take that one as well. Um, in the same vein, we would be looking at, at the queries themselves. So in the answer, we're now in the answers tab of the X platform. Um, we can look at the search logs to see what queries people are asking and we can see um, how often they're asking it, how often they're interacting it, but more importantly, um, how often or what percentage of time that their query is being answered by data we have in the knowledge graph. So if a lot of people are searching for a very for a specific query um, on your site and their knowledge graph rate is, is kind of low, meaning that there's not a ton of information in our knowledge graph to, to answer that currently, um, A, that's a very important information that we want and it's a good thing we have um, the answer to analytics, but B, we would solve that by adding that content um, to, our, to our knowledge graph, whether that be content from directly from your, your page itself 
um, or content that um, that you can put in to the knowledge graph or that we can put in for you. And then we'd be looking for, for that knowledge graph rate percentage to go up. Another way we could do this, if we didn't have, say, specific information to answer that specific question, um, is we could use query rules or synonyms to kind of point customers in the right direction. So when, when someone asks for this very specific query, we can point them to another entity that's already in the platform that better answers the question. Um, because at the end of the day, if we answer the question, um, you know, we don't want nothing coming up. So we want to answer a question or um, point them somewhere on your page that they can find the answer to the question. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to give one more minute before um, we close out our final questions. Okay, um, awesome. Thank you everybody for joining. Um, we will follow up with anybody if you asked um, questions specific to um, your account, um, but feel free to, again, post in the community if anything else um, comes up or you also can talk to your account manager. Um, and yeah, we really appreciate your engagement. Thank you for joining us today and we hope that uh, you learned something valuable. Um, great, thanks everyone.